Hey, what's up everyone? Julian here, hope you're all good and welcome to this quick introductory video on Python virtual environments. And hopefully by the end of it, you'll know what a virtual environment is, how to work with one, how to create one, how to delete one, and why you would even want one in the first place. So we're gonna be covering Windows, Mac, and Linux. So that should cover every operating system that the majority of people use. And the good thing about Python virtual environments is you don't need any third party packages, libraries, or scripts to create one. Python has got it built in out of the box. So let's jump into the demo here and have a look at the setup. So on the left, I've got a Windows command prompt and I'm running on a Windows machine. And on the right, I've got a bash terminal running Windows subsystem for Linux with Ubuntu. So Cast your mind back to when you install Python. You go to python.org, you download the installer, you run it, and then you know, you'll come to your command line and enter the Python command. And that's gonna launch you into the Python interactive interpreter using your system Python. Let's quit that. And if we run pip list, that's gonna return a list of any site packages that you've installed using pip. And this is the um, site packages for your system Python. So to create a virtual environment, I think actually maybe we should touch on what a virtual environment is. So a virtual environment is a local version of Python within a directory. So let's say, for example, you're creating a new project and you're going to be installing some packages. You don't really want to interfere with your system Python you want to create a local environment and that's going to include Python. It's going to include pip and all the tools that you need to run Python in this isolated bubble of Python, purely dedicated to the project or the script or the application that you're working on. So how do we create one? So let's start over in Linux. So we do Python dash M V E N V and then the name of the environment. I'm going to call mine end. So let's go ahead and run that. And it's going to take a few seconds just to create the environment. And once it's done, we can go into it. So if we have a look now, we've got a new directory called env, which is our virtual environment. We can cd into env and take a look around. We've got bin, we've got include, we've got lib. So let's poke around these directories. So let's go into bin. So this is going to take, contain some of the binary files that we're going to use. So we've got activate, which is going to activate the virtual environment. And I'll explain more about what that means in just a sec. We've got pip and we've also got Python. We've got a few other things, but you don't really need to pay too much attention to them. So let's go ahead and I want to run pip, pip list on this Linux machine and just take a look at some of the packages. Because what we're going to do is we're going to activate our virtual environment. We're going to install a third party package using pip, and then we're going to go and check it out. So I'm going to be installing a package called bleach. So I just wanted to make sure that I don't have it installed already. So let's clear and ls again. So let's go ahead and activate our virtual environment. And we can do that with dot activate. And we can see our prompt has changed and we've got the name of our environment just at the beginning of the prompt here. So now if we run pip list, you can see we don't get the same list as before. And that's because when we run pip list with an activated virtual environment, it's actually going to be running this version of pip. So the virtual environment of pip is now going to be in use whenever we use the pip command. And it's the same story with Python and we can't tell here yet exactly what environment we're in but you have to believe me when this version of python is not our system python it's this version here inside of our virtual environment so what i'm going to do is quit that in fact i think this will illustrate even more if we try and import bleach we get a module not found error and that's because we haven't installed the package into our virtual environment so what we can do is go ahead and pip install bleach. And again, because we've got our virtual environment activated, pip is uh, going to install any packages or any commands to do with pip are gonna be related to our virtual environment. So now if we run pip list, we can see we've now got bleach. So if we Python and if we import bleach, 
you can see we don't get any errors because we now have that site package in our local uh, library of site packages. So let's quit out of here and let's take a quick look in the lib directory. And this is gonna contain a Python 3 directory. If we run ls, we get a site packages. So this is gonna be the directory where pip will install any packages to. So we can see here, we have got bleach. For example, we could do pip install flask. And once that's installed, we can go ahead and run ls and we can now see we've got flask and we've got a few other dependencies that flask comes along with. So activate the environment, pip install and any pip commands are gonna be related to your local virtual environment. And it's the same story when you run the Python command, if you've activated your virtual environment, it's not going to launch the system version of Python, it's gonna launch your local uh, virtual environment version of Python. So I hope that makes a bit of sense. And maybe one last thing we will do is go ahead and in the same directory as our virtual environment, we'll just go ahead and touch, uh, I'll just call it main.py, and we'll maybe just open this with nano, and we'll go ahead and import bleach, and we can do um, just x equals bleach dot clean. And what I'm gonna do is just to keep this video speedy, I'm just gonna copy and paste just an example from the bleach docs and then we'll go ahead and just print X. So go ahead and save that. So our virtual environment is active. If we run ls, we see we've got main.py. And now if we do Python main.py, the bleach package is gonna be imported and we're using a method in the bleach library and we're printing something out. So to deactivate a virtual environment, you use the deactivate command. And now if we were to try to run our main.py, we get an error because bleach is not in our system Python. So again, just reasons why you'd want to use a virtual environment is because you don't want to interfere with your system version of Python. Don't get me wrong, this is completely optional, but it's just kind of um, best practice and it's gonna help you in the long run because you know you might be working on a project, you can keep a local version of Python uh, within the project itself. And if you wanna get rid of a virtual environment, we can just do uh, rm-r and then the name of the directory. And if we run ls again, and let's just, uh, let's remove main.py. If we run ls now, this directory is completely empty. So that's how easy it is to create, activate, install packages, and remove a Python virtual environment. So the story on Windows is very, very similar. We do python-m v-e-n-v and then the name of the environment that we want to create. Let's create one called uh, winm. So again, that's going to take a few seconds to run, but once it's done, we can do pretty much the same as what we did on the Linux and Mac side, but there are a few differences. So if we run the dir command, we see we've got our winm directory. If we go into that directory, take a look around, rather than have uh, the bin directory, we now have this scripts directory. So if we go into scripts, list the contents there, it's a kind of similar story here. So we've got a lot of the same looking files. We've got activate, we've got um, pip, we've got Python. So to activate a virtual environment on Windows, you use the activate command. And now we can see our prompt has changed. And if we run pip list, you can see it's the same story as on Linux here. Any uh, pip commands or Python commands that we run with the environment active are gonna be funneled into this local environment. So again, we can do pip install, uh, Bcrypt. Because we've got our environment active, that's gonna install it into our local site packages. So let's check that out. Again, it's in lib. We check that out. It's a slightly different structure. Um, this just has, it goes straight to the site packages directory. On Linux, it did have that kind of intermediate uh, Python, Python 3.7 directory. 
So let's go into site packages and list that out. And there we go, we've got bcrypt. So to deactivate a virtual environment in Windows, we can use the deactivate command and we can see that our prompt has changed. So let's, uh, let's just back out of here. And I think that's everything actually. I think I wanted to just make a really quick video just to introduce you to working with virtual environments in Python, just to show you really how simple they are. You don't need any of these um, third party tools like pipenv, virtualenv, you can just use the Python dash M V E N V followed by the name of your environment. And there's all sorts of other things you can do with virtual environments, but we're not going to cover that in this video. It's just really an introduction. So I hope you found this video useful. If you've got any comments, questions, or suggestions, then feel free to drop them below and uh, feel free to like, and subscribe if you are enjoying the content. So thank you very much for watching and I will see you in the next one.